She has a super PAC, actually more than one. Last report was their super PAC raised $25 million from special interest, $15 million from Wall Street alone. And Secretary Clinton has given some speeches uh, to Wall Street where she's paid over $200,000 a speech. Now, I think, this is what I think, if you're going to get paid $200,000 for a speech, must be a pretty damn good speech. And if it's such a good speech, you got to release the transcripts. Let everybody see it. In fact, I can't wait to see it. It has to be an unbelievably great speech. Now, there's another issue that separates us. This is not a sexy issue, but it is a very important issue. The media doesn't cover this issue at all, but you know how important it is. And we'll talk about the media later. Okay. It is the issue of the impact of disastrous trade agreements. Are you all familiar with NAFTA and CAFTA, criminal and trade? Here's, here's a story. Back in the early 1990s when I was elected to Congress, I worked very hard, was on picket lines in opposition to NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement. Because I knew what these trade agreements were about. You all know what they're about. Corporations write them, and they're saying, why do I have to pay a worker in Oklahoma 15, 20, 25 bucks an hour. I can go to China, I can go to Mexico, pay people very low wages, and I bring my product back into this country. That's about it. That's the whole theory. And that's what's happening. That's right. Since 2001, we have lost 60,000 factories in this country, millions of decent paying jobs. Here's a story. Early 1990s, I went to the Maquiladora area in Mexico. It's a special zone where the Mexican government provides tax breaks for corporations who settle in that area. And I looked at the area, drove around, and you had all of these incredibly new state-of-the-art factories. Many of them, of course, previously existing in the United States of America. And then I went to meet some of the workers in those factories. I wish that I could tell you that I went to their homes to talk to them. I can't tell you that because they didn't have homes. They were literally living in cardboard shacks making 25 cents an hour back then. So, so what has happened over the last many years is we have lost millions of decent paying jobs. Workers who lost those jobs often get other jobs at half the wages. So our message to corporate America is if you want us to purchase your products, you damn well better start manufacturing those products here in America. I led the opposition to NAFTA, helped lead the opposition to NAFTA, helped lead the opposition to PN, permanent normal trade relations with China, Secretary Clinton supported both of those agreements. Everybody knows that foreign policy impacts every single one of us. The most important foreign policy decision made in the modern history of this country, last 30 years, has been the war in Iraq. When you are in Congress, you listen very carefully to what people are saying because you know that the vote you cast, the decision you make, could well result in some young men and women in your state not coming home alive. I listened very carefully to what President Bush and Vice President Cheney I listened to what they had to say I didn't believe what they had to say.
I voted against the war in Iraq. And if you go to my website, berniesanders.com, what you will find, read the speech that I gave before the war in terms of what I feared would happen in terms of destabilization and chaos in their area, much of which, in fact, did happen. Now, when we talk about why there is so much angst in America, why people are frustrated, disillusioned. It has to do with the fact that they are looking out around them and they're saying, how does it happen that in this great country, the middle class of America continues to disappear and almost all new income and wealth is going to the top 1%. And what the American people are saying, how does it happen that in America today, the top 1%, no, I beg your pardon, the top one-tenth of 1% 1 now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. How does it happen that the 20 wealthiest people now own more wealth than the bottom 150 million Americans. <laughs> this is not an economy that is moral, that is sustainable, or is American. Are you ready for a radical idea? Yeah. All right, together we are going to create an economy that works for working families and the middle class, not just the people on top. Today in America, real unemployment is not 5%. If you include those people who have given up looking for work and those people who are working part-time when they want to work full-time, Real unemployment is close to 10%. And in various communities, the Native American community, the numbers are much, much higher than that. With you, when you look at youth unemployment, you are looking for kids who graduated high school today. If those kids are white between 17 and 20, 33%. Real unemployment, Latino, 36%, African-American, 51%. And if anybody here thinks that that very high rate of youth unemployment is not directly connected to another American tragedy, and that tragedy is we have 2.2 million people in jail. We spend $80 billion a year locking up fellow Americans. So here is radical idea number two. You ready? We are going to invest for our young people in education and jobs. not more jails or more incarceration. And when we talk about jobs, it seems to me that when real unemployment for working people is close to 10%, when youth unemployment is off the charts, we need a massive federal jobs program to put our people back to work. We should be hiring teachers, not firing teachers. <laughs> 